guys, welcome back to Justin Reads Romance. I'm Justin, and today I'm going to be discussing all the books that I want to read in May. I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. I'm going to include way more books on the caveat that I probably won't get to all of them because I'm a notorious mood reader. I will tell you which books I definitely plan on reading in May. Usually I only include about like 10 or 12 books, but I'm just going to list off everything that I want to be reading because I've been reading a lot, like close to 30 books per month. And um, I just wanted to mention more books that I'm looking forward to and hopefully I will get to sometime during the month. <laughs> first of all, I'm going to list off what books we're going to be covering on the podcast, Smart Women Read Romance. The first book that we're going to be talking about is Toxic Desire by Robin Lovett. This is a sci-fi alien romance. Very interesting. They crash land on a planet and the atmosphere, the plants, everything is filled with like this aphrodisiac and their enemies because he, the alien, attacked her ship and now they're feeling um, this uncontrolled controllable desire for each other. It's very interesting and I can't wait to talk about it. Next, I'm so excited for Juliet to read this book for the first time. I got an arc of the intimacy experiment way before it released and I read it and I loved it. It's one of my favorite books of this year and I can't wait to talk about it. It includes characters that were featured in The Roommate. The Roommate, I wasn't a huge fan of The Roommate. It was just like okay, but like this book. This book is where it's at. It's amazing. Hot seminal rabbi hero paired with a former sex worker amazing. I love it. Can't wait to talk about it. And next we're going to talk about Devil's Bride. I just realized I forgot to get my really pretty copy with um, the amazing picture on the back, but I love my copy of Devil's Bride. Previously on the podcast, we talked about one of the characters that you actually see in Devil's Bride. There's these two twins, Amanda and Amelia, and we covered Amanda's book. But Juliet and I were just um, talking fondly about the series a while back and I was like, we need to go back to where it started. So we decided to include Devil's Bride on the podcast, the start of the Sinster series. And then finally, we're going to be reviewing Night Rains by Diane Duvall. I was looking up, I was telling Juliet about the series. It kind of has certain vibes that um, are similar to Sherilyn Kenyon's Dark Hunter series and um, very, very different types of paranormal characters, but it has like the similar vibes where there's there's this like leader of the bunch and he reminds me a lot of Ash um, from Sherilyn Kenyon series. Anyway, I digress. So this book is about these vampires who are like vampire hunters. The bad vampires who kind of go like crazy after being turned. And what's funny about these good vampires, the immortal guardians, they're vegan because they taste like every little thing that goes into food. So they can't stand like processed food or anything. So they're like completely like vegan and <laughs> I've never read a vampire who is vegan. They do consume food, like real food, as well as blood. And this is also an alien romance because the heroine is an alien. And I don't want to spoil too much about her background information, but Amy becomes like the second to Marcus, who is an immortal guardian. And they always have like seconds to kind of help them with like weapons and keeping them supplied and keeping them organized and stuff. And Amy becomes a second and it's their romance. And it's really cute. I really like it. Okay, so now for my arcs that I'm definitely reading this month, of course, Devil in Disguise. I'm reading it this month. It doesn't come out until July but I can't wait on it. So I'm going to be reading. Um, this is a continuation of the Ravnel series. I'm excited to see how it ties in with like the Ravnel family. I'm not quite sure about that, which is one of the reasons why I'm reading it now because I'm like, I have to have answers. So I will be reading Devil in Disguise. Lisa Kleypas is one of my favorite historical authors and I just, yeah, I expect to, to absolutely love this book. Next, you might be surprised by seeing this book on my list for ARCs. I'm gonna read Neon Gods by Katie Robert. And if you've watched my authors that I don't plan on reading any more of, Katie Robert was featured on one of those and I think I included that on like my anti-TBR tag as well. I made an exception because so many people were telling me when I was saying how I was looking for good Hades and Persephone romance that Neon Gods by Katie Roberts, Katie Robert, I always say Katie Roberts, Katie Robert is really, really good in one of their favorite Hades and Persephone romance novels that they've ever read. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take one more chance and I'm going to read this one. I've heard that it has some very interesting concepts, so I am excited about it. And then finally, I have a new to me author, Navessa Allen, The Kings of Kearney. And MC Romance is not one of my favorite um, tropes and romance, but I decided to request this one because the cover is hot. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's why I requested this novel, but um, Jenna already read this and she said she really liked it, so I'm very interested in it. The hero is the chief enforcer of this MC club, and I think his nickname is like The Viking, and the heroine owns a bar, and I think her grandmother also owns a nursing home. 
maybe, or maybe she's in the nursing home. I don't know, but I think it might be like an opposites attract romance and a bit of like a mystery and stuff. So I'm willing to give, I'm always looking for like that MC romance that just clicks with me. And I thought that this one had potential and so I requested it. All right, so that's all the arcs that I'm going to be reading during the month of May. Now on to my book club picks. For the Rake Appreciation Society, they picked a an author, a historical author that I've never read before. I know that Crystal has featured some of the step backs from this author um, on her Instagram account, so I'm excited. And this one is called, I need to take that sticker off. I'm just looking at it, just realized that. It's um, Teresa Medeiros and it's After Midnight. I'm not sure what it's about. I just got it off of eBay because I knew that this was going to be their May pick. Let's see what we have. So we have an older sister, Caroline, concerned with her younger sister, Vivian, keeping company with the infamous Adrian Kane, Viscount Trevelyan. Trevelyan? Trevelyan? Oh my goodness, I butchered that. Who most of the time firmly believe is a vampire? Surely it's nonsense, and yet the brooding gentleman inhabits a dark castle and is never seen in daylight? this like a paranormal historical? Was I not paying attention when this was announced? Oh my god. Okay, so very, very interesting. Possible vampire historical romance? Very intrigued. I can't wait to read this one. And I think that the live show is on May 13th. Let me check my Airtable because that's what it's there for. Yes, May 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then for the historical hellions with Jess and Samantha, their pick is Then Came You by Lisa Kleypas. This is the first book in the Gamblers of Craven series. I have already read this book, but it's going to be a reread. And I really don't remember that much from it because I feel like I've read it quite a while ago. Also, we have another older sister who's hell bent on rescuing a younger sister who um, might be engaged to Lord Alex Rayford, the Earl of Wolverton. So it sounds like enemies to lovers. I'm telling you, I remember nothing about this. It's so crazy, but I am really glad that I have this um, edition of Then Came You. I think it's one of my favorite ones by Lisa Kleypas, her old school historical romance. I will put it up a little bit closer. Oh, it's so pretty. I think I got this in one of the mystery eBay book lots and I was just like, wow, I'm so excited. So that'll be a fun reread because it'll be like reading it for the first time. Also, I will be doing a live show with Jen and Crystal and Tiffany on the Maiden Lane series. So I have two more books to read until I've completed the entire Maiden Lane series. So I have um, Duke of Pleasure. I'm like trying to read it upside down, Jess, and just turn it towards you crazy. Anyway, Duke of Pleasure, really like this cover and the step back is absolutely gorgeous. Elizabeth Hoyt has some of my favorite step backs. I really like them. And then we have Duke of Desire. I found this one in Barnes and Noble and I do have to laugh at his face. It's very intense. Um, I don't know who this one's about. I do know who that one, oh, I love yellow so much. Oh my God. Okay, talking a mile a minute but I do need to finish up the series. So I do plan on reading these and the live shows on May 8th. And so that's very soon. I have to jump on these, but I've been enjoying the audiobooks for these so much. So it's not gonna take me that long to read them. If you haven't read the Maiden Lane series, what are you waiting for? Um, they get really good. <laughs> I hate saying this. They get really good on um, book four. Just wanted to let you guys know. And a few new releases. So I have Forbidden by Carla Sorensen. This is the fourth book in her Ward sister series coming out on May 20th. And I think the sister is Isabel, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's been a while since I've read um, a book in the Ward sister series. So she's a gem owner. Like she owns this gem and she trains at it. And I think that her love interest is Aiden Hennessy and he is a former fighter. He's a widower trying to start over. Oh my God, this is like amazing. And apparently Isabel has had a crush on him since she was a teenager. <gasps> okay, so it's age gap too. This might be my favorite in the Ward sister series. I'm super excited. And then Filthy Hot, which is the next book in the Five Point Mob series by Serena Ackroyd. I really love this mafia romance um, series. It's very unique. And this one's coming out on May 27th. Okay, so now I'm going to throw out a couple books that I'm like, I hope I get to. I hope I get to. These are the books that I'm not sure I'm going to get to, but they are on like my list of, or my pile that I'm going to be selecting from this month. But again, mood reader. Don't know if I'm going to get to them. So the first up, we have The Air by Sophie Lark. This is a spinoff. It's the next gen from her Brutal Birthright series. And this is called the Kingmaker series. So it's the children of all the characters from Brutal 
birthright. And from what I've heard from Jen, it's kind of like Hogwarts for mafia kids <laughs> and they have like houses and stuff. So I'm very, very, very intrigued. The cover is gorgeous. They have um, all the covers for the series are out and I would like to own them in paperback. So I hope that I like the series because I will be purchasing them if I do. Next is The Protector by Ellen Pierre. This is another book recommendation from Jen. I get a lot of my book recommendations from Jen, so I mention her a lot in my videos. Sorry if that annoys you, but she reads a ton of freaking books and she tells me all about them and it makes me have FOMO again, so I wanna read them. But this is kind of like a sci-fi um, romance because it's like 400 years in the future and like women are not plentiful on earth. And I think they think that women are extinct. Oh, I should probably pull up the synopsis. Okay. Never mind. I had that completely backwards. Men are few and women are plentiful. So 400 years in the future, men are few and women rule the world, except for the area formerly known as Canada and Alaska, which is inhabited by the men of the Northlands, a group of strong men who refuse to be ruled by women. So the heroine Christina is an archeologist and a professor of history, fascinated by the past. She's a modern woman that knows that women are better off without men, but longing for an adventure, she makes a spontaneous decision, volunteers for a job that no one else wants. Now she's going to lead an archeological excavation in the Northlands. What will happen when Christina crosses into the men's territory will they allow her to do her job and is there any way that they'll let her leave again unharmed it just seems very very unique i hope to get to this book this is on any play so it is likely that i'll get to it i've been loving audiobooks lately it's been the majority of what i've been reading during the month and yeah so probably gonna get to this one. Next I have The Raquel of Roth um, by Amelie Howard. And I, it's been so long since I've read The Beast of Bessick and I feel like I need to go read some reviews of it to refresh my memory because I don't want to reread The Beast of Bessick. I just want to jump into this one, um, but I do know this is the sister of the heroine from The Beast of Bessick and um, it's like a marriage in trouble because at the end of Beast of, of Bessick, her little sister gets married all of a sudden out of nowhere because it's a marriage of convenience. And I think this picks up a couple years from that. So I want to get through this book, possible historical vlog where this will be included with some other historicals that I wanted to get through that I'm not including on this video because again, I want to read a lot of books. Do I get to them? Not always. Next, I want to read Heated Rivalry by Rachel Reed. This is the second book in the Game Changer series. I really liked the first book in the series, um, but I gave that one four stars. But the second book is the one, the reason why I started this series. I know that a lot of people really love Heated Rivalry. This is an MM romance, a hockey romance, and we did see the hero in the first one, and he is a Russian hockey player, and I'm just so excited. I can't wait to get to this one. It's also on any play, so again, I'm, it's likely that I'll get to this book. Oh, and I'm pretty sure it's like enemies to lovers because they're rivals, Heated Rivalry. And then next is The Rivalry by Nikki Sloan. I wanted to read this book partly because this guy's ass is just incredible on the cover and uh, yeah i i'm a sucker for really hot guys on the cover or really hot bodies on the cover so it's a football romance i've been kind of leaning towards sports romance for my contemporaries lately and i'm not mad at it i'm just gonna go with the flow and then finally i do have this one on my list um of sunlight and stardust by riley hart and I believe that this was Nalika that said that this was one of her favorite MM romances that she read recently. So I'm always looking for some really good MM romances. And um, so it says, after the death of his wife, Tanner Rowe takes a step toward making her dying wish come true and buys a house with a dilapidated barn she's been inexplicably drawn to in the picturesque Upper Peninsula. But after a year, he still can't get past his grief long enough to make the repairs he promised. Recently out of prison, Cole Lachlan has little to his name, homeless, broke, and without many options as a felon, Cole heads to Red Bluff with the hopes of a second chance. So apparently Cole trades room and board um, so that he can help rebuild the barn for Tanner and it's a love story between them. I really like it. Something about a hidden journal. After unearthing a hidden journal from 1948, Cole and Tanner spend the evenings poring over the pages reading about a young man pining after his best friend. Cool. Okay. Well, definitely want to read this one. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to say Another book that I'm definitely reading is The Hellion Bride by Katherine Coulter. This is the second book in the Bride series, and I really love The Sherbrooke Bride a lot. So this is The Hellion Bride. I believe that part of it's set in Jamaica, 
which I really love the step back a lot. I'll be buddy reading this with Jen, so this is a sure thing that I will be reading. All right, it's time for the spinner wheel portion of this May TBR. I will be spinning first for um, my old school historical romances. I collect a lot of them. I want to actually read them, so I put a bunch of them on the spinner wheel, about 12 of them, and let's spin and see what we get for this month. Spelled that wrong. It's Princess of Fire by Shannon Drake. I really love the cover for this book. It's so amazing. It's like so vibrant and pink. You're gonna come sit on me? Okay. <laughs> So it says, um, Shannon Drake offers a smoldering story of a land divided by treachery and a man and a woman bound by passion. Although Alaric, a mighty Norman warrior, rescues Fallon from certain death, she tries desperately to resist the seductive enemy who vows to conquer her with a love that will turn her heart to fire. Interesting. It says it's the first book in her fire series. And I'm really excited about that. Next, I'll be doing a spinner wheel for books that I recently purchased. Um, a lot of them are contemporary. Not all of them are contemporary, but we'll see what it lands on. So. The Holdout by Mickey Miller. I just saw that I passed up the rivalry on there, so that's that's on there. But The Holdout by Mickey Miller, I completely forgot about what this is about. Um, let me go see. It might have been one of the books that I got for free from BookBub. Okay, so this says it's the second book in the Brewer Brothers series. I did not read the first book. Um, oh, it's a football <laughs> romance. Look, contemporary knew that that's the type of romance that I wanted. Thank you, Spinner Wheel. Okay, so it says, impatient, demanding, sexy, bossy. I hate my new boss. He's Everett Brewer, football smoking hot superstar running back. And when I signed on to be the NFL superstar's in-home personal assistant, I had no idea what I was in for. Every one of his previous personal assistants quit after one week max. After meeting with him just once, I see why. He's broody, impatient, demanding, and add a little too sexy for his own good. His standards are ridiculously high, but I really need the job. So yeah, sounds like an interesting romance and I'm here for it. I'm ready to see what happens. And finally, I have my Kindle Unlimited pick. There's so many books on Kindle Unlimited that I see and like catches my eye and I really wanna read it. So there's quite a bit on this spinner wheel and I'm just excited because I really have good luck with Kate. Once We Were Starlight, Mia Sheridan. This is a new book that she recently came out with and I'm having a little bit mixed feelings about Mia Sheridan just because the um, More Than Forever, I really didn't love that one, but it was one of her older ones that she published. So let's see, Once We Were Starlight. Oh my God, what is this book? <laughs> I didn't read the synopsis at all. I just saw that she came out with a new book and I put it on the spinner wheel. So it says, um, Sundara, the lush and forbidden oasis in the desert where men travel to watch acts of sexual deviancy. The only existence 17 year old Karis has ever known, but despite a life where secrets and sin are, high, are in high supply and freedom remains far beyond their reach, Karis and her partner Zakai find safety in each other. Their passionate love and light helps them both survive the darkness. Very suddenly, I don't know if I want to read this one. Do I want to read this one? I'm not feeling it guys. I normally don't do this. It's the spinner wheel, you know, whatever the spinner wheel picks. So I am going to respin because like I said, I did not read the synopsis for that book. I'm going to hide that slice. We don't want that one. All right, let's see what our second option is. We Were Once by S.L. Scott. I've never read anything by S.L. Scott before, and this is definitely a book that I picked because from KU because the cover was pretty. I mean, it's on brand, it's on brand. All right, I have three goals. Graduate from an Ivy League university, get into medical school, and follow in my father's well-established footsteps. Everything was going exactly as planned until the local bad boy was delivered to my doorstep. Literally, from the moment we meet, my old life becomes unrecognizable, but I have no regrets. I'm utterly captivated by him, his smirk, his heart, his sharp wit. He pushes me to live, to be wild, to pursue the dreams I've always hidden inside. To the rest of the world, we make no sense. Me, the girl from the gilded New England coast, Joshua from the small town of New Haven. To us, we're destiny. 
Together we had it all, desperately, madly in love until we didn't when tragic night changed everything. So it sounds like there's going to be quite a bit of angst in this one. We'll see how I like it. Again, this will be the first, the first book that I've ever read by S.L. Scott. So I'm excited about it. That was a lot of books that I got through. Believe it or not, there are many more that I actually want to read. Um, but yeah, yeah. We'll see what I actually end up by completing by the end of this month. I do keep track of all the books that I read on Instagram. I post them on my Instagram stories. I use the Library Goblin template. I really like them um, and they're very user friendly if you upload them to Canva and you can just like pop in the covers and it's very amazing. All right guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you plan on reading in May if you plan on reading any of the that I have on my list or if there's something that I need to check out during the month of May because again mood reader and I might pick it up. Leave a comment down below if you have a book suggestion and I will see you guys soon. If you like this video give it a big thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to my channel make sure you subscribe to get notified of any future videos that I do. Thank you so much for watching and remember life's better with a little HEA. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.